quality professionals have very close relation to what they're doing in their corporate career in comparison to a business analyst. Whereas in a quality professional, the pay scale is comparatively less than a business analyst. But if you're a senior manager in QA or have a team lead, your pay scale is good. And if you like to do the quality personal work, the QA work, then that's well and good. But if you are looking about a change in your career, at some point you want to become a business analyst so that you can slowly climb up the corporate ladder because once you're a business analyst, then you can become a manager for the even for the development team. And then you can climb up that you can become a director and it and and you can progress like that, right? So so for those who are motivated enough to become a business analyst from a quality professional. So I'm going to briefly explain to you who, first of all, who will be the audience for this? First, that will be the first one that we cover. The second one is I'm going to discuss about what is the relation between what QA professionals are doing and what BA professionals are doing, right? What is the relation so that it's that you can compare how easy it is to transition from one to the other, right? And thirdly, in concluding, I'm going to tell you what you can do right now if you're a quality professional and if you want to become a business analyst, what do you have to do right now, starting from today, so that uh, three months from now or six months from now, if you want to transition to a business analyst, you can start right now. So those are the important points that I'll be covering. And uh, if you didn't, um, if you didn't subscribe so far, or if you did, please do um, subscribe because there will be a lot of new information coming from me like this. It will be very informative for you in your career and in your corporate life. Okay. Okay. So let's just get started. Let me bring up the uh, the presentation. Just give me one second here. The screen and this one. Okay, so okay, so like I was mentioning, so who are all the potential beneficiaries? So a quality professional or a QA who is working in functional or non-functional testing, and manual testers, automated testers. What is automated testing? I think you would already know about it if you're a QA professional. So there will be scripts written by a developer or a, a BA or QA professional, whoever it is. Once they write the scripts, these scripts are recorded and they can be used as uh, testing scripts. Uh, that is automated testing. Then integrated testing, regression testing, load testers, stress testers, security testers, scalability testers, all these different kinds of testers, anti-testers, volume testers, smoke testers, scalability testers, all these QA professionals can potentially become a business analyst and climb up the corporate ladder and make more money and get consistent jobs. So that's why we are talking about it now. Now, the final point I have written here is user acceptance testing. So this UAT is not actually done by a QA professional. It is actually done by the uh, business or the user who is requesting the software to be built, right? But what is the role of a QA here? So whenever there is a chance for you to get involved in UAT, you should get involved. As a QA professional, you should get involved. That is the reason why I mentioned this here, because uh, during user acceptance testing, the user might be asking directly, he, he or she might want clarifications. So it is important for you to practice talking to important stakeholders in the corporation so that you know, you, you improve your communication skills, you know how to talk to them. So every chance you get to be part of user acceptance testing, take, take take part in it, don't miss it. Because uh, they might be asking like, where is the data? What, what is the issue? They might have clarifications. They, they might not find what they're looking for. They might need the environment prepared. A lot of issues might come up like that. Usually they communicate directly to a BA, but in cases where BA doesn't have a proper answer, and since it is dealing with uh, quality uh, assurance, they might come to you. 
So every and and also for preparing the re environment, getting the data ready, all these things, uh, the BA would need help. So whenever there is a chance to help out with the user acceptance testing, you should gladly try to do it so that you get the chance to be part of important meetings and uh, upgrade your skills, right? Okay, now uh, let's come to the next point, which is similarity between a QA and BA work, right? So here I have, um, so um, like a business analyst has a domain knowledge, domain expertise, whereas a QA has module expertise in that particular module they're working in, right? A business analyst will be, for example, if it's healthcare domain, they would have expertise on the healthcare domain, uh, whereas QA will be more into the particular module that they are testing, right? Uh, and the second point is BA has data flow information across the the uh, knowledge about the data flow information across the modules from one module to the other. What are all the data feeds that is going from one module to the other? Business analyst would know about it, whereas QA has knowledge about the mode Q has knowledge about knowledge about the module they are testing, right? So they would have uh, information about the data in a particular module. What are they looking for in a table and those kind of things. Whereas a BA would have information about data flow across the modules. So, but they are similar, right? They still have a um, BA has information about uh, data and QA also has information about data, right? Now the third point is B has knowledge of data flow across different modules, right? QA has knowledge about data in tables of the module that he or she is validating, right? So there are two, uh, two things here when we are mentioning data. One is the feed that is going from one module to the other, right? Uh, if Because a module can get data from tables, external files, upstream, there are a lot of sources, right? So be able to have information about all the interaction of one module across one module to the upstream downstream all the other be able to have information about that whereas qa would have more detailed information about that particular module what they're testing what are the primary tables how the data is there uh, how the data is structured in that table that kind of information be uh, qa will have right so they kind of have similar so once the qa starts working in a team for more than six months or one year they kind of have the same information as a BA. If you look at if you look at it actually, because once QA starts testing in more than one module, he or she also has information about more than one module, which BA also has, right? So there's a lot of similar similarities between the two. Now the test plan, test case are created by BA and it's validated. BA is it's actually validated and results are captured by QA, right? Because if you um, test plans are created by BA, whereas the actual validation, actual testing is done by QA. And after that, QA gives this back to BA and BA reviews it before he or she confirms to the business that this is ready to be implemented in production, right? So um, the input is provided. The input, uh, the, the artifacts are created by BA here which is worked on by QA and QA gives it back to BA and BA verifies it and give it to the business, right? So there is a very close working relation between QA and BA. So, and then the final point here is BA interact with important stakeholders. QA interact with BAs, managers, and other stakeholders. So for a QA, he or she may not get as much chance as a BA to interact with important stakeholders, but still he or she gets a lot of chance to interact with other important players like um, you know managers and other stakeholders. And in some cases, BA might pull QA to an important meeting where um, details about validation has to be mentioned. In that case, BA is just one step below in terms of the interaction with the business. So uh, once the QA starts working in a company for more than six months, he or she almost has all the exposure that a BA has. 
So the transition from a VA to a QA where is very seamless. It's not tough at all. And um, only what you need to have though is the desire and the passion to get it to start working as a BA so that you can climb up your career ladder or corporate ladder, right? So, and then finally, let's come to the next one. So, uh, as I was telling initially, what action needs to be taken now so that you can transition from a QA to a BA, right? So, first of all, it's the communication skills. I keep telling about this all the time because whenever you are talking to the important stakeholders, people who are key players in your organization, you should make sure that your communication skills are on par with anyone else, right? So that's very important. Second one I mentioned here is the structured query language. So um, like when we mention about uh, SQL, we are talking about, we are not talking about uh, QL learning uh, SQL like a database professional or anything like that. You should know basics, basics like how to query the tables, how to delete data, insert, update, how to link between three or four or five tables using the primary key or how to link the tables, um, uh, uh, those kind of information and a little bit about indexing and all that plus unions and joins and what is the difference between different types of joins and uh, that is what you need to be learning, focusing on right now and also another while talking about the same thing um, what is the structure of the tables what are the primary tables in your module those are the things that will help you focus once you focus on that it, your transition to a BA would be very seamless right and then third function, third one is the learn functionality. So while we talk about functionality, you know, like um, when your uh, let's say your screen has uh, three drop downs, three drop down, uh, three drop down menus like list chart, right? Uh, list drop down, and then you have three other radio buttons and um, and selections like that, and and the header and the detail section. So functionality means what you're learning is how is data coming into this module, from where it is coming, which table it is coming from. And when you select a particular dropdown, what will be the values in the other dropdown, in the related dropdown? What will be the values in the next dropdown? So when you select a specific uh, dropdown, is all the radio buttons active or only few radio buttons are active? Those are the things. Uh, when you learn that, then you will automatically understand the functionality, right? Because uh, then you would know, okay, why, how is this related and what is going behind it, right? And also when I'm talking about the functionality, I just want to mention one important thing is that every time you get a chance for validating data, try to enter the data yourself rather than asking a um, developer or BA to enter data, try to enter it yourself. So you will, that is the most important step you can do to learn the functionality, okay? And uh, and this, I, I think this next point is the tables and relationships in a database is the same thing. Like um, uh, when you're working on a particular module, you should know what is the important tables in there. You should uh, be able to by heart the table names because when you are uh, validating another application, uh, let's say another application in another organization, similar kind of application. Most of the time, these tables are very similar. So if the table has uh, four, four or five primary fields here, when you go to another organization and working on the same uh, similar kind of application, it's going to be similar. So once you are uh, familiar with the tables and their relationship, like what 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 is the primary key that is used in here? What are the foreign keys? What are the fields that is being indexed? Just a rough idea about, and then more like, like for example, account name, uh, account number, or um, like anything like that. Is it numeric or alphanumeric? That kind of information will help you in very much in the long run, right? And second one, and the last, the next one is different environments and their use. 
So you should have a fair idea about like how many environments you have. Like we have dev environment, we have QA environment. Then we also have system integrated testing, application integrated testing. In some places there is like a production replica environment where it is maintained exactly like production. So how does this help? This helps because once you transition as a BA, you might have more authority or more, more your role will have more authority to play around with the data than when you're a QA, right? So in that time, uh, you won't mess around. Like let's say a production replica, then you know like, okay, I shouldn't be messing around there because that data is to be kept exactly like in production, right? Uh, and then for example, UAT, UAT, is sometimes it's used for other purpose, but when the user is testing, we don't mess around the data there. So those kind of information will be very helpful during interviews and things like that. Then the next point is um, Excel skills. So Excel skills are uh, important as BA, QA, developer, anybody, but it's always good to be learning about it. That's why I mentioned it. The final point I have here is um, MS Visio. MS Visio is uh, like a flowchart. Uh, I think most of you might be familiar. It's very simple to learn, but it's very useful because once you're working as a BA, you get a lot of chances to uh, create different flow charts, like different uh, flow diagrams, or a sequence diagram, that diagram, there's a lot of diagrams that uh, BA will be producing. So once you're familiar with the uh, MS Visio, uh, some of the artifacts that uh, uh, the BAs are uh, making, uh, it will be easy for you to uh, understand and start trying to do that. Okay, so um, uh, the next uh, video I'll be telling, I'll be showing you exactly how some of the tables and data, uh, tables and uh, screens in actual corporate environment, how it will be looking like so that you can learn about it. The next video will be about it. But anyways, thanks for your time now, and uh, I'll talk to you all another time. Peace. Bye now.